Hello everyone, in this 1.20.1 Forge uh, Minecraft development tutorial, we're going to be going over how to add custom armor to the game along with texturing and uh, custom armor tiers as well, which we'll need for this. But before we get started, I would like to give a shout out to my Minecraft server hosting partner, uh, Bisect Hosting. Um, this is a great service I've used for quite a while. Um, it offers server hosting for over 70 games, so even beyond Minecraft, there's quite a lot here. Um, also, you can pre-install, you can also pre-install over 2,000 Minecraft mod packs automatically. So if there's any mo Minecraft mod pack you play with your friends or you want to play with your friends that is relatively popular, it's on here. So as you can see, all the mods are very popular. Better Minecraft is very popular, but those are just two examples in the A's and B's. Um, also, this service offer, offers 24-7, 365 support that can help you troubleshoot your server and your mods. I can partic particularly attest to this because um, I use the service personally to host servers with my friends, and they are very uh, responsive and helpful. Um, to get things figured out. You can also have full file access yourself. So with your mods, um, your plugins, config files, things like that, um, you're able to edit. Also, you can host your server over 20 secure lo uh, locations across the globe. So I invite you to check out my affiliate link in the description. I'll bring you to this website. Um, there's plenty of great information here to inform a uh, possible purchase. So again, thank you for Bisect Hosting for supporting me and I'm definitely happy to support them in return. But let's get started here with our um, tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is register a new tier um, to, to whatever uh, item you wanna do. So, for example, here I am adding Ruby armor. So here I'm adding a new um, Ruby tier. So this is in item events dot armor tier registry. And we're passing an event um, that adds a Ruby tier. So what I think it's important for me to explain all these characteristics here. So to start your durability multiplier. So this is how much uh, durability like how much better the durability is depending on the item. So this is Ruby, so I decided to put it pretty high, round size diamond, so put it at 15. The next, uh, the next attribute here are slot protection. So what this is, is it's what um, each armor piece specifically gives you. So this is, this is uh, equal to an array of integers, of four integers exa exactly, starting with three, which is our helmet, uh, six, which is going to be our chest plate, eight, which is going to be our leggings, and then three, which is going to be our boots. Next is the enchantment value attribute, and I said this at 10. So this is how, how, how much good enchantment you get putting this in enchantment table. So in vanilla, um, gold has a higher enchantability than uh, iron, for example, or leather. Um, next is the equip sound attribute. Um, as you can see here, I'm using the diamond armor equip sound because it's a gem and I figured it'd be the most similar. Um, next, you can specify a repair ingredient, which I set to my custom Ruby item, which I'll get to in a second here. Um, next is the armor toughness. Um, I set to two. Again, it adds that, that additional armor to it. And then knockback resistance as well. And that's how much knockback resistance your armor has. If, you have, if you're not 100% confident with what these things mean, I recommend you take a look on the Minecraft wiki and it, it, it'll give, you know, how much of these attributes does leather have, does iron have, does gold, diamond, netherite, right? So you, you, 
um, when you're making your mod pack, you can, and you, you're trying to add new item, you know, new item tiers, you can compare that. So if you want your, if you want uh, something between leather and iron, right, you can put something in, you can use numbers that are in between the leather and iron. So um, Minecraft Wiki is a pretty good resource for this. And again, if you don't really understand these materials, you're not going to do the make do the best job in actually making these tiers. Um, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at the register. So here, this is where we are actually creating the items. So um, again, this is done by event.create. Um, the first thing you're passing in here, well, first of all, for the Ruby, as is mentioned here as, as the repair ingredient, we're just doing event.create Ruby. So the item is going to have an ID of cube.js colon Ruby. Um, in addition here, uh, we're actually creating the armor piece. So Ruby helmet, Ruby chest plate, Ruby leggings, and Ruby boots. So when we're creating armors, we have to add the, the specific um, descriptor here. So for the helmet, that's going to be helmet item. For the chest plate, that's going to be chest plate item, and so on. You, and for the armor uh, pieces as well, you also have to chain on uh, the tier method. So the tier is Ruby. And this is the same, this is the same thing as this right here. So again, this is going to create, um, this is going to create cube.js Ruby helmet. Uh, this is going to create cube.js uh, Ruby chest plate. This is going to create cube.js Ruby leggings. And this is going to create cube.js Ruby boots. All right, so the next thing we need to take a look at is or the, how are we going to actually craft these items. So this is a review. Um, I recommend you take a look at my my other video that references, references how to make um, shape crafting recipes. But for the sake of the video, I figure that's, that's important to do. OK, so and again, as a review here, res, the shape recipes is in the server scripts. And our armor tier registry and re regular registry is are in startup. So you, you can't reload this in game. You have to restart. So the next thing we need to take a look at are the textures. So um, as you can see here, uh, we have, you can barely see it. Let me zoom in. You have the Ruby boots, Ruby chest plate. Um, Ruby gem. Well, actually, that, that's not used in this. That's in my Infinite Horizons mod pack. Um, my Ruby helmet, Ruby leggings, and Ruby, which I'll be using in this test mod pack. So the question is, how do you make these textures? Well, um, I would refer you to Blockbench. Uh, this is something that I was introduced, introduced to a few months ago. And this is a great tool that has been very useful to me in actually developing textures. So um, as you can see here, you can create file new image and you can make a name and you can make a resolution, which is usually going to be 16 by 16. But let's, let's cancel that because I already did that. Um, as you can see here, I, I made these in Blockbench. So there's plain there's plenty of tools that you can use, and there's plenty of good tutorials on Blockbench, so I'm not going to elaborate too much. But essentially, I made all of the textures for here. Um, going back, going back to the actual code part, um, it's important to understand that it's named Ruby Boots, Ruby Chestplate, Ruby uh, Helmet. Leggings and Ruby. I'm just going to delete this. Um, as you can see here, it's the same exact name. 
So if you don't specify the, the texture file path in the registry, then it will just default to this.png. So that matches. Um, the next thing to think about um, is, so the Ruby boots in here in chess play and such, this is what's gonna look like in item form. So while you're holding in your hand, but the slightly more complicated part is how to make armor, how do you make an armor texture that actually appears on your skin wearing it? So the first thing you need to do is uh, note QJS doesn't have this by default. You have to create this folder. Under textures, you have to create a folder named models. And then you have to create a folder in models named armor. And in armor, we have two, uh, two different uh, PNG files here. So it's going to be whatever your tier is. So in this case, it's Ruby underscore layer underscore one dot PNG. And I'll show this in block bench in a second. Um, so Ruby layer one or la any layer one uh, file, PNG file is going to include textures for your helmet, your chest plate and your boots. And then Ruby layer two dot PNG or tier underscore layer two, that's that's going to include the texture for your, the leggings. So let me go back and block bench and I can show that in a little more detail here. So up here um, on the top left of the screen, you'll see the helmet. This is where the helmet texture is. Okay. Down here are the boots. And over here is the chest plate. And then in Ruby layer two, this is just where the leggings are. Again, textures are not my expertise. So I just threw something together real quick using the tools that Blockbench gave. And again, Blockbench is pretty good because it gives uh, someone like me that's not that good with textures. I can still make something fairly decent like this in the span of the 10 seconds I spent with this. So anyways, let me go back into the code. So we have our texture models, but we need to reference them. So this is another folder that you have to create in your, in your QJS assets folder. So under QJS assets, um, QJS, you have to create a folder named models, exactly spelled like this. And again, that's exactly spelled like down here, all lowercase. And then in here, I am creating JSON files. So you can get away with not really being that familiar with JSON, but as a simple explanation here, as long as you make it in the form that I did exactly, then you'll be fine. But to explain what this is, um, the first the first thing here is the parent. So um, this is just used in terms of this is used in vanilla Minecraft. And then we specifying the texture. So it, on layer zero, we have cube.js item slash Ruby helmet. Again, you have to you have to do it like this because it's going to link to um, your models, your armor models down here. So real quick, the helmet, the chest plate, the leggings, and then the boots. So again, all like this. Okay, so once you do everything that we talked about in this video, you should be good. Um, when, I've, when I started doing this sort of stuff, I always made mistakes and it always went down to spelling errors, capitalization errors, because again, like models has to be spelled exactly like that. Armor has to, has to be spelled exactly like that. Everything in here, everything in this JSON file has to be exactly right. Case sensitive for the mod to actually read it. And same thing with mod development, by the way. So again, 
if you made a mistake, I would recommend just double checking my video. But if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to comment. Well, anyways, let us go in game now to actually see our textures. I loaded this in advance. So as you can see here, the the ruby helmet, um, chest, chest plate, leggings, and boots work, and the ruby as well. And then it works putting on the skin. And listen. And as you can see, it makes a sound. So that's that that works just fine. Um, so if you have any questions about this, I know this was a long, relatively long video and long-winded video. If you have any questions, again, uh, please feel free to comment. This is a more advanced QJS topic, so it's understandable if you run into issues. It's a lot. It's a lot harder than just creating a Ruby, for example, because all you need is the statement and the, the texture. But feel free to reach out if you need any help uh, via commenting. Um, if And otherwise, I appreciate your time watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.